Hello and welcome. This is Rufamonger with another tips and tricks video for Injustice 2, this time detailing the Swamp Thing. Now Swamp Thing, he's amazing. So first thing I want to go over is his neutral game. Just his buttons. They're fantastic. They're out of this world. If you came from a Street Fighter background, you'll be jealous. Like specifically say his 4-2. Yeah, it hit from that far away. And also, it's one of his main combo starters, the boot. On top of hitting from very far away. So he can just outrange people like nobody's business. And 4 is not even a slow move. Uh, it's medium overhead overhead, so it's not like they're going to be ducking it. Uh, comes out fairly quick. It's very hit confirmable on hit. And on block, it's only minus two for the full string, which is fantastic. So combined with that, and he has some other options, like uh, once I get a bit closer, back two is a 12 frame advancing mid. Also leads to a full string that is plus on block, plus on block, plus six even. And uh, another string that has a low end and overhead in it that is also very hit confirmable and very safe on block as well. It can actually lead to a bit of a 50-50. This here last hits overhead. And instead of last, last hit, you can substitute the log, going for an overhead low 50-50 mix-up. So overall, his neutral is fairly fantastic, and that kind of leads to the next part about since people want to get past his neutral, they're going to want to start jumping. So I want to mention jumping really quick. Alright, so for his anti-air game, since as we've gone over, people are going to start wanting to jump here. Uh, once they start getting beaten on the ground, right? So for the anti-air game, he has two aspects to it. His reactive anti-air game, which meaning you're doing it as you're seeing it. And his predictive anti-air game, meaning you're anticipating a jump, but they haven't quite done it just yet. So first for the reactive part, uh, we have Canary here, so the jump, playback, he has a stand 1-1. One, one. So what makes stand 1-1 one, one so good is the part where the vine shows up, he can't be hurt. It just works. You have to get past the little vine whip to actually hit him, which is hard to do because it's actively slapping you in the face. And it's also quite easy to confirm into uh, the up fine, as you can see here, a nice little combo. And the next aspect here of that is the predictive anti-air, which is, let me get you off the jump for one moment, his forward three. That's the universal ground bounce. Now you see here, he lifts that log. That whole log is a big hitbox. Meaning it will absolutely slap people out of the air if it connects. So you don't want to do this if they're already jumping because you will get beat for free. But if you smell a jump, you anticipate it, you do that and you get a nice little combo afterwards. Oh. I'm botching the combo, but you get the idea. There you are. Anyways, on to the next segment. Now, for the next subject, I do actually have another video on my channel detailing this in uh, well, much greater detail, but I do want to quickly go over the tick grab setups. So normally, people with command grabs, if you do a move and they block, command grab whiffs, as you can see here. Uh, Swamp Thing actually has a couple normals that on block will directly go into the command grab. Those are Stand 2-1, Crouch 1, and the Uppercut. So just a quick mention of that, uh, check out the other video, uh, it has a Bane and Swamp Thing's tick grab setups for greater detail on that. Now next up, I want to discuss his clone and its use as a standing reset. So what that means is when the opponent is hit by the clone, in most cases and most combos and they're still standing, they are going to be in front of your face and you have massive, uh, massive advantage over them. Uh, in the companion combo video I have also on the channel here, it shows you some of the combos leading into it, but uh, long story short, say we do back 2 3 2, right? These I'm standing so you can end in the clone. And you can like, kind of shuffle around while they gotta recover from it. So, one of the nastier things you can do off this is clone, wait a split second, and go for the throw, the command grab. This puts them in a very undesirable situation. Because 
To beat this, the only way out is to either immediately, I mean mash, backdash after the clone hits, or hold up and jump. And thankfully for that, uh, we got two options to beat it. So say they're so scared of that, they're going to hold straight up. Either option, if you just do the string again, say on this particular string, back 232, two, it could be another string, but this particular string is quite handy and it'll beat both the backdash and the jump straight up. Now you might not necessarily get a full combo, they'll fall out, but they'll still punish them for attempting to get out of the situation. But it's just a nice little strong setup, and you will guarantee the first time everyone will fall for it, no doubt about it. And since it's a new combo, the damage doesn't scale. It's a very handy tip to keep in mind. Another thing to mention for Swamp Thing is any stage with a wall bounce, he actually benefits quite decently from it. So quick example combo here. So list of damage is 404. So say versus the B and B meter combo. So that only does about 20, 30 more points in it. So he actually gets fantastic damage off wall bounces. So it's really good to keep in mind. Uh, it is a bit tricky. I see here I just kind of botched it. So you do got to learn the timing on it. But it's a great tool to keep in mind and it's an excellent source of meterless damage. Now I'd like to bring up the trait. Abigail's Garden. Abigail being Abigail Arcane, the daughter of his main villain, just so you know. Uh, what it does here is small damage over time and while the opponent's in it, they can't backdash, forward dash, or jump. So it's pretty all right, but you know, they gotta kind of walk into it and if they have any kind of fireball, they're not gonna be so inclined because why would they, right? Uh, but one thing here is you can actually do a combo into it and force them into it. So you're gonna be sacrificing, it's not gonna be maximum damage or anything, but you can guarantee they will be stuck in the garden. So example combo here and Let's just set the movement here in case I botch it. So, da da da, into EX tree, back to, well, there's the watch. So, da da da, EX tree, back to trait. As you can see here, they're stuck inside of it. So, one more time. So, that back two actually moves them, you pass them in the corner, and when they fall back down, they take your their place back in the corner over you. But since you were there for a split second, the garden is there. Meaning they have to wake up inside of the trait. And then at the point, you know, they can't escape. So you have them in lockdown. So it's up to you to keep them there. But it's a very frustrating thing to be to know they can't jump anymore. And the only way out is to hit you. So it's a great tool to keep in mind and make it a part of your arsenal. Now, the next thing to mention is there is some gaps in his strings, meaning that uh, there is a small reaction window possible at the end of his back 2-2-3 two, two, combos and forward 2-3-3. Three, three. So let's show you here, I have the bot set to backdash after a hit. So the last hit there is backdashable. And so, oops, so is this one. So that's mid screen, uh, just as a note, so in the corner, and backdash, but this string cannot be backdashed in the corner. They will get hit because the last set has so many active frames. But now uh, another thing to mention here. So I specifically picked Canary for this reason because she has the counter attack move. So the last hit here in the back two, two, three string, if Canary were to say, anticipate you doing it, could mash counter and it'll succeed. However, the gap in the forward 233 string is much too small and she'll get bopped out of it. Now that's Canary for the counter. That's not everyone obviously here, but uh, say people are anticipating the gap and are backdashing, right? Quick and easy way to beat that is you anticipate their anticipation and say, let's do something like this. So we know you're gonna backdash, so, and there you go. The clone is so active that even the invincibility of the backdash can't beat out against it. And you still get bopped. And same thing for this. 
And then, once again, we mentioned that standing reset with the clone. So it's a great opportunity to pull something like that off. Anyways, I just something for you to be aware of. And finally, maybe it's not the biggest note to go out on, but it's pretty handy. So say, you know, you knock your foe down in the corner and you anticipate the wake up. So an obvious way to beat the wake up is, say, go for an armored B3 or 4 3 attack. And he's got a pretty swaggy armored B3 in the corner. Because you can do this. And back into the corner we go. So just a fun little tip, tip to beat armored wake ups, or sorry, invincible wake ups in the corner. And it just kind of gets you a good little bit of damage and puts them right back where they started. Anyways, I hope all these Swamp Thing tips found you well. And he's just very fun to play. He's not top tier and not anywhere near it even. But he's really fun to play. It's really fun to control a lot of space with him. He's got fun anti-air attacks. And he kind of just plays... And I don't mean this in a good way or a bad way. But in a way, he kind of plays like a Street Fighter character in the way he wants to play. Anyways, go out there and play some Injustice and have a lot of fun. Thank you very much.